system. This is a wall, and it's connected to the Earth, and it's not moving, right? Earth. So this, the closed system we're talking about has to include the Earth to do a proper job of conservation momentum. And how much? And I, think, I think I did talk about this about jumping in the air, about whether I move the Earth. Well, the same thing is happening here. I bounce this ball off the wall, and the wall connected to the ground, just like the gun was last time for the vertical of the ballistic pendulum, right? In that case, the Earth is able to soak up as much momentum as you want to deliver to it, right? In other words, the Earth can provide any impulse you need to make the numbers work out in your problem. The Earth's got effectively an infinite amount of mass, effectively. It's not really, but it's much bigger than the ball. So that means that if I want to conserve momentum, I can always do it by saying, oh yeah, well the Earth is moving that way at 0.001 meter per second, and that provides just enough momentum to make sure the momentum is conserved. That means that you can't use conservation momentum as a practical tool to, to calculate how fast the ball is going to bounce off the wall. But in this problem, because it's an elastic collision, I can use conservation of what? Kinetic energy. That's right. Kinetic, uh, kinetic energy in this case is conserved, so I know one half empty squared for Vn is the same as one half empty squared for V out. The only thing that's moving is the ball. Um, so anything, it's just the same thing. Right. Easy, right? So if you have an inelastic collision with a wall and it's not maximally inelastic, that's tricky because now you don't have information from momentum conservation. The Earth is soaking up or providing whatever momentum you need. By the way, this gets back to the discussion we had a minute ago about the relative masses of the bullet and the gun and why it was that one was getting all the kinetic energy. The bullet gets all the kinetic energy when there's a, when you, if the bullet's small because of the gun. For the same reason that the kinetic energy of the bullet coming in before it collided with the block was huge compared to the final kinetic energy of the block plus the wood. When you, when you, when you have an inelastic collision, in that case, a maximally elastic collision, um, kinetic energy winds up preferentially going to the lighter object, right, in order to conserve momentum. So uh, that's true here as well. And so if we worry about how much kinetic energy does the Earth have? Right? Because I just told you that I could soak up as much momentum as I needed with the motion of the Earth at a very small velocity. You might worry, oh, wait a minute, why should I have conservation of kinetic energy even, for a, even if I have an elastic collision with the ball and the wall? After all, the Earth has some kinetic energy, right? So maybe I should be adding that in after the collision. Initially, the ball's coming up with some velocity, the Earth is not moving, right? The ball bounces off the wall. Now the Earth and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the wall are moving ever so slightly away. There's some kinetic energy. But remember, kinetic energy goes like V squared. So that means that if the V of the Earth, the recoil velocity, so V at time one of the Earth and wall, uh, this is a pretty massive object here, and one means time one. So the Earth and wall velocity at time one at the end, <coughs> it's going to go like, well, yeah, it's, well, it's going to be exactly. My initial velocity, let's call it, let's go ahead, oh, sorry, oh. zero, and I'm going to call this thing ball. Zero ball, one ball. And I'll say, okay, that's equal to negative v, zero ball, right? All right, that's good for lower, it's always going to be. Because we got, all right, zero ball, okay, well, the, the recoil velocity here is going to be this, uh, it's actually going to be two times this, times uh, the, um, the mass of the earth uh, plus mass of the wall, right? Might as well say mass of earth here, over mass of the ball. Does everyone see this? All I'm doing is running conservation momentum, and I just wrote it in my equation. I said that I know the incoming ball velocity times the mass of the ball, mv. Oh, oh I got my thing down, don't I? mv goes on top. M wall plus M earth goes on the bottom, right? This must be a very small velocity compared to that. Well, so think about initial versus final. Initial, the ball is moving toward the, toward the wall, and the wall and the earth aren't moving. Afterward, the ball's coming back the opposite way. So if I say, what was the change in the momentum of the ball? It's two times its initial momentum. It started off with MV, and it comes out with negative MV. That means that its difference is two times, negative times MV. The earth must have acquired positive two times MV, so that it all adds up. Is that right? Is that right? So in comes the earth, the wall's not moving. I think that's right. That way I wind up with a net amount of momentum that is mv going that way. When I sum positive to mv that way and add that to minus mv for the ball, I wind up still one times positive mv. Okay, great. So conservation momentum gives us this equation. And that's that ratio of mass that we saw that I keep talking about. What if we ask about the kinetic energy? The kinetic energy of the earth plus wall, right? What does that look like? And this is at time, at time uh, t1, it's final. Initially it's zero, right? Well, if this is the velocity, the velocity there is equal to two, there's a two in here, and there's, if there's this ratio of masses, and mv over m earth, I think I forgot, you can just neglect that, not the wall, because now you're just compared to two, whatever the wall. So mv over mv gets squared. Right? And that's the point. That sure, you've got mass of Earth in front of your kinetic energy for the Earth and the wall. And you can add plus mass wall, but that's small for you to have. And then we get V squared, right? We get V1 Earth plus wall squared. Okay, but that's one half mass Earth. And now I got mass of ball over mass Earth squared. And it's the same old story, right? Of the initial velocity of the ball. I'm talking about the factor two, but who cares about the two? You've got a ratio of mass ball over mass Earth, mass Earth squared. That's why I don't have to worry about kinetic energy from the Earth. <coughs> Momentum is conserved, so that means that the velocities of objects after the collision are as you the center of mass coordinate system, we didn't do this in center of mass, but, but, the, but um, actually we did, didn't we? If the Earth is infinitely massive compared to the ball, the center of mass of the system is in fact holding still with respect to the ball of the Earth. So if we actually went through the exercise of carrying out our prime coordinate system, center of mass coordinate system, when there's a wall in the problem that's connected to the Earth, right? It's always going to turn out that for that system, center of mass is going to be just holding still with respect to the ball. So in fact, we were looking at it from the center of mass coordinate system. I just didn't advertise it that way, but that's what we did. And so what does that mean? It means that if you're in the center of mass coordinate system, you know that the, the, uh, when you have a collision, you wind up imparting uh, momentum, the, the velocity is bigger for the small mass objects and smaller for the larger mass objects, and the kinetic energy goes like that squared, so the really massive objects essentially have zero kinetic energy before and after the collision. So you don't have to worry about that. You can't use it to solve anything, except to know that you can, when you have an elastic collision or the wall and problem, you can just keep track of one half mv squared for the non-massive objects, right? All right, lots of stuff. Relative velocity, center mass coordinate system, collisions, elastic, inelastic, what to do if there's a wall, and you see what to do if there's a wall. Just look at it from the center of mass coordinate system, i.e. hold still with respect to the wall, and then change the signs and all the objects that bounce off. If it's inelastic, if it's elastic. If it's maximally elastic, what's the final velocity of the ball? What's instead of a ball, it's putty. I throw, it at the, I throw the putty at the, at the wall. What's the final velocity going to be the putty? Zero. That's easy, right? What's tough is the intermediate case. You need some extra information if it's, if it's inelastic but not maximal. So. Okay, great. So two more things. One is the ballistic pendulum, uh, horizontal ballistic pendulum, and the other is talking about rockets. Uh, I'll do, well, let's see. Let's do the ballistic pendulum. It's all loaded up. So what's the question here? The question here is the same as last time. Um, it's what's the muzzle velocity of the gun? Right? How fast is the bullet when it, leaves the, when it leaves the gun? But there's two differences now with this pendulum, right? Compared to the last one. One is that it's horizontal instead of vertical. However, it's on chains, right? So, I mean, well, it's however. The second difference is that it's on chains instead of being anchored. The gun is not nailed to
if the gun is, if it's not a cannon on a, on a ship, you know, if it's a, if it's a, if the mass of bullets tiny compared to the mass of the gun, it's not going to recoil very much. So in fact, this is dramatic, you might imagine, but you know, you know, not very much. But when he comes back, he will go up in the air a little bit, and we can use that just like we did last time. I don't have a ruler or you know, yard stick, or I should say a meter stick in class. We don't have a meter stick to measure how high it went. But if we did, we could say MGH and use that. Ah, but wait, there are these chains, right? And they provide some, there's tension. Chains like ropes can only pull. And we'll assume they're ideal chains, even though they have some mass, we'll ignore the fact they have mass and neglect that. So they only pull. But can they do work on the gun? So can these chains? Yeah, people are answering, and I think the answers I'm seeing are mostly correct. Uh, are the, can the chains do work on the gun? Now you've already seen if you have a simple pendulum, but there's a ball here hanging on a string, right? You know that the string uh, can't do work on as long as I'm pulling on the string. As long as the string is tied as it is here, the top, right? Because the motion of the, the ball or whatever it is is always going to be perpendicular. It's always going to be perpendicular to the direction of force along the, the string or, the, or the, uh, the chain, right? Well, the same thing is true here, even though there's four chains instead of one chain. When this gun goes back, the motion of the end of it is always perpendicular. Of the part of the gun that you know, like the gun actually even change, you know, you do some kind of angle change or whatever. But whatever it does, the motion at the end of this chain is always perpendicular to the chain. Because the chain's tied on up there. If it were moving up or down over the chain, then it wouldn't be taut anymore. If it moved up, it wouldn't be taut. Then it would fall into gravity until it is taut. So this guy's doing a force the whole time, but it's not doing any work. It's not, it's not providing any power. Because V dotted with, V being velocity of this part of the gun, dotted with the, uh, the force, that winds up being zero. And that's not quite right. So, so anyway, it's pretty elaborate with the guy here, all this setup. Um, just because, uh, not me, uh, another instructor actually put a hole in the wall over here. You can see the hole. <coughs> but, uh, oh, just, you know, not to worry, another piece shooter. So I'll go ahead and this one again. I, I get these burn things. Because, the, uh, because this, if I pull on it, then I'm holding the gun, and I don't want to touch it. I want to have it recoil. So what I want to do is like the old Westerns, they used to have, you know, like when I was a kid, they would have these, uh, I mean, they were, they were on TV when I was a kid, they were not on TV anymore, but, um, just so you know, but they were, uh, you know, some guy would rig something up like this, because he's, you know, he's on the run from the law, and he leaves his gun behind him, he has this thing set up, so we shoot, he's not there, and I get to do this now, somehow. all right, even though I'm not really much of a lawbreaker, all right, here it goes, I'm going to light this thing on fire, and it's going to go, Ooh, that was loud than the last time, that was pretty good, but it didn't go very high, did you see it didn't go very high? And it didn't go high because the mass of the bullet is tiny compared to the mass. I'm sorry, it was startled. You knew it was coming. Uh, we always call it, just so you know, we always do call campus police. They know we're going to fire them. They don't hear any too many reports or anything like that. Um, but the, uh, so that didn't go very far for the reason we talked about. But did you notice that the block went exactly the same distance as the gun? In fact, the block is the same mass as the gun. And if I didn't tell you, someone didn't tell you, I'm telling everything. Someone didn't tell you that the block had the same mass as the gun. Uh, you might wonder, wait, what's bigger? Why is, it, well, why is it that the block is bigger uh, and it has the same mass? Your material. Yeah, the gun's got a lot of metal in it, so it's heavier. It, well, it's not heavier. It's more dense. Denser. Yeah, right. More mass per volume. That's right. So, and this is a lighter wood, right? So the, the point is that if these guys have the same mass, the gun and the block. Well, there's two collisions in this problem, effectively. The first collision is when the bullet flies out of the gun. It's sort of, an in, sort of a reverse inelastic, in fact, maximum elastic collision. So there's back-to-back -back momentum of the bullet and the gun. Same momentum, different sign, same momentum. But as we saw, it doesn't go, you know, the gun just sort of moves a little bit. You know that bullet's going fast. We've already measured it with other pendulums. It's going 400 meters per second. That's 800 miles an hour. The gun's not going 800 miles an hour. It's going uh, 1 100 to that. Right? Is that true? 8 miles an hour? Yeah, I can believe it. Um, so the bullet comes out, hits that piece of wood, and now what happens? There's another collision. And that collision is also maximally elastic. Um, and the mass of the bullet is the same as the mass, I mean, is the tiny part of the mass of the wood by factor of 100 again, right? So the result is that, again, kinetic energy is not conserved. Right? So lots of energy was lost right there, right? You lost a bunch of energy uh, in that collision. And in fact, um, well, a good thing, though, was the, that almost all the energy available in the, in the gunpowder, to the extent that it went into the kinetic energy of anything, went into the kinetic energy of the bullet, not the gun, because of the difference between the mass of the machine, the machine, the machine, the But then, during the second collision, the same sort of thing happened in reverse. Again, you have back to back momentum, all the matter coming together. So the bullets coming in from the center of the mass system, right? They're coming together. They collide, and then they hold still. If we ask then, what. If, so, so we can, we can think about this problem the way of doing this, this other one over here, where we break it into pieces and talk about the system that consists of, you know, the gun and the bullet, and then the bullet and the wood, and then actually in this case we bullet the wood and the bullet and the wood in those two cases. But here we can leave the bullet out of the whole equation. If we, if we just wanted to know, um, if we just wanted to know what would the, uh, what would the relative, what would, let's see, how, if we suppose we told us at the end of the problem what the recoil, what the momentum of the gun was that way, suppose we were told that problem system, and they asked, okay, what's the momentum going to be of the block of wood at the end? We can skip the middleman. We don't even think about the bullet at all. We can think of it as an internal force in the problem, because after all, momentum was conserved when the bullet was shot, momentum of the gun and the bullet, and momentum was conserved between the bullet and the block, and in fact. If we throw them all together, you say, well, momentum is also conserved between the block, the bullet, and the gun in both those cases as a whole system. Then all the forces between the bullet and the gun, and the forces between the bullet and the block are all internal forces. Now you can just think about it in terms of, uh, uh, you say, well, initially there's no momentum at all, nobody's moving. After the fact, the bullet's lodged in the wood, the wood's moving that way, the gun's moving that way. If you know what the momentum of the gun is, you know what the velocity of the gun is that way in particular, then you know that the velocity of the wood has to be equal and opposite at the end without going through all the intermediate steps. The thing is, conservation laws are powerful for that reason, right? That's why we use them so much. In the same way, you don't have to worry about, like, you don't have to how fast is the ball moving, it goes around the loop, the loop, a certain height, right? You don't have to actually calculate. Uh, that's equals all the way along the way. You can just go skip the chase. Just go from the beginning to the end. Same thing here. Depending on what you're asking, what you're given, you can skip steps and go right to the final stage. If you know which conservation law to use. In this case, you wouldn't be able to use conservation kinetic energy. You can use conservation amount. So if we broke this problem up into stages, and uh, let's see, what are we given? Um, well, whichever thing we're given, if we're given the motion of the gun, we're supposed to figure out what the muscle velocity is. So I actually ask you a question. Who knows what the muscle velocity is? That's what you're asked, right? How fast is the bullet relative to the gun? It's a couple things to think about. One is that um, if you're given the, so if you're given the velocity of the block, or if you're given how high the block went, which is sort of analogous to this problem, right? In that case, you just forget about the gun. Okay, well, let's just calculate how fast the bullet was going, doing the same steps we did here. Take you from bullet, moving bullet, to moving bullet lodged in block, to block and bullet holding still at some greater height h, mgh, even though it's taking a circular path, no work is done by the chains, it's just conservation of energy at the end. But, but that doesn't quite solve the problem. Because this problem, the gun's moving, unlike this other probl
as you see these problems, right, there's, it's set up so that you can only use one or the other. They're designed that way so that you force to use one or the other. So we can, as a test writer, homework problem writer, you can you know, force a student to demonstrate, yes, I know the fact that you can use that. Right? Yeah. Um, so I told the video, let's do a real quick rocket. Rocket doesn't involve firearms, though. So how do you do this thing? Uh, you guys know how to do this? I forget how to do this. My daughter would probably tell me how to do this. Oh, yeah, what is this for? I got extra pieces here. All right, where's the camera? camera? All right, I'll do it back here so you guys don't get too wet. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm pumping it up. And now after all the gunplay, it's sort of any climactic, whatever. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pump this guy up. Put a lot of pressure inside, pressure of gas inside. The reason I'm doing this is I want you to think about conservation of momentum in the context of a rocket. Like, how do rockets work? Is momentum conserved with a rocket? Doesn't seem like it, right? Because now it's not moving. And now I pull it back and let's see what happens. Woo! <laughs> that was more dramatic than the gun. I think I got myself wet. But that's okay. So does that, was momentum conserved right there? Does that break the laws of physics? It was not moving, right? I pulled the trigger on this guy and it shot off. Oh, and, and it went, you know, it had non-zero momentum, right? So was momentum not, so who thinks momentum was, was conserved there? Who thinks momentum was not conserved? There's really a few people, it's only really twice. <laughs> Most of you didn't vote at all. It's a pretty strange electorate. So here's the thing. Um, momentum is always conserved, all right? Um, and you might say, yeah, what's going on is you're pushing on it. So like, Earth's pushing, it's like the problem with the volume of the wall. It's not true. So once I pulled this thing back, I didn't see where the rocket went. That was a pretty good shot. Oh, over there? Yeah. Pardon me. There's people outside. So when I pulled this thing back, when I pulled this thing back, it, it, uh, the, the, the rocket shot up in the air. But when I say the rocket, I mean that red plastic thing. But what is most of the mass inside a rocket? So when you, so when you, when you go to Cape Canaveral, right? And you got, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the space program. So you got, the, you got these gigantic rockets. Is that all that living quarters for the astronauts? What is all that? Fuel. That is fuel. The vast majority of mass, almost everything on a rocket is fuel. They pack a lot of fuel on a rocket, right? And you see, actually, they don't, they don't get to the gas station yet. They don't get to That's true. But, but the thing is, if you want to go fast and if you want to move out of space, how do you do it? So the way a rocket works is that it conserves momentum. It's a closed system. So that means that if the plastic thing's going to go that way and have momentum, then what is it that went out the other side? What am I covered with now? What am I breathing? Yes, water. That's right. So, so the water is the fuel of this kind of a rocket. The, the water is the stuff that shoots out the back. Now, of course, we're shooting out because there's air pressure, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into fluids later in the semester from air pressure. And we'll make, we'll, make a, we'll make a can out of it, we'll make an air can and do some damage to some coke cans and have a lot of fun. But the bottom line is that there's some internal force between the water and the rocket. It doesn't matter what kind, right? It's just like the, the gunpowder. It doesn't matter the gunpowder, right? There's something that's going to provide a force between these things. And the result was that the, the plastic rocket had an upward momentum, and the water had downward momentum. The water's more massive. There's water in there. So that means that a slow velocity for the, for the water, with a bigger mass, can result in a bigger velocity for the plastic in the opposite direction, for smaller mass. Momentum is conserved the rocket. Rockets do not work by pushing against the air behind them, or the person holding the thing, or whatever. Otherwise, you go out of space and you'd be sunk. You wouldn't be able to go anywhere, right? Rockets work in outer space. That means they have to work for an isolated system that is conserving momentum. And that's how they work. The way a rocket might as well, you have to be throwing oranges, although I think it's a big oranges, but you're in the back of the rocket, throwing oranges after the back of the rocket, that'd be a rocket. You know, the rocket goes the other way. When the astronauts do their little face walk, they bring an aerosol can, they go, right? And then they can go the other way. Like, that's how they move around, right? It's like in the movies, they always have the guy, shoot the gun direction he wants to move, he's flying off the building. That's stupid. Shoot the gun the opposite direction you want to move. Momentum is conserved, right? This is like you need to drag the bullet in the gun, you know, no. Shoot the other way, if this ever happens to you, shoot the opposite direction. All right, so we'll, we'll do more on uh, Thursday, and we'll have uh, Q&A. Come, 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 come,